On the 12th of June, America's worst ever mass shooting. A direct attack on the gay community at Orlando's Pulse nightclub. It shocked the world and brought the gay community together. Including two days later at a vigil in London Soho. Sometimes when you talk about the gay community, it can sound and feel like a bit of a cliche, but stood here, I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, what's happened in Orlando, they take it personally. It's like they've lost members of their own family. I've come to Florida to find out why this place has seen one of the worst homophobic attacks in history. So as you can see, Pulse is straight up ahead, still very much a live crime scene. And behind me, there's just onlookers wondering how the hell this happened. It's only a couple of days after the shootings. The city is still in shock and confusion. The killer, Omar Mateen, claimed allegiance to ISIS. But it turns out he was also a regular at Pulse. At a vigil in the centre of the city, friends of those who died are still trying to come to terms with their loss. Julia Lazada is here with her girlfriend, Nicole. They went to Pulse every week and knew about half of those who were killed. In terms of um, the individual who walks into Pulse and, and kills all of these people, what, what do you think his story was? Like, what, what was his motives? I think he was very sad. I think he was very confused and angry. I think he was also very scared, a very scared individual who he didn't want to accept the part of himself that he probably hated. And so do you think he was gay? Yes, absolutely. Hearts up, guys, hearts up. I had a friend that said he talked to him on Jack, which is a gay app. He said, and my friend's not a liar, so I believe him. He probably was gay, and he was probably fighting it, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people that c can't come out of the closet, and they they hate and envy us because we can't. When you, you're conflicted that much, you're literally ripping your soul apart. And once it tears that far, you, you know, you do something as horrible as that. If they're right that the gunman was struggling with his sexuality and religion, I needed to speak to other gay Muslims. It's a sensitive subject, but finally, I get the number of a transsexual Muslim who is willing to talk to me. Hello, whereabouts are you exactly? Asif has asked that we don't reveal his identity. Oh, cool, I, I think I can see you. We you meet can... at the official memorial. Hello. Hello. How do you do? I'm doing well. Lovely to meet you. It's nice to see you too. And Name... thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. We all must go. As soon as we start talking, we get moved on. Turns out, I'm not the only visitor in town. Is it because the president's coming? Yeah. Thank you. How easy is it to be a gay Muslim? It's actually really difficult. I actually had um, a very, very popular uh, Muslim uh, guy actually preach at my local university. One time he actually preached that everything that's wrong in this world is nude beaches, gay people, and people that change their sex. I was right in front of him. I kid you not, but... How, how do you respond to that? How do you react? You had to hold your tongue. Uh, if I had said something, I would have outed myself. In the distance, Obama lays a wreath at the memorial. Unbelievable. Uh, you're a trans guy. You also happen to be a Muslim. Can you understand to a certain extent where his mind may have been? I do. Um, as a trans man, or I know some gay Muslims that have this issue, you can't be yourself, you can't open to yourself, you can't say, hey, I want to be able to live my life happily. But it's not just Muslims who have to deal with homophobia, even in a gay-friendly city like Orlando. The next day, I meet up with Julia from the vigil. She's getting a tattoo to remember her friends who died. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? What are you looking to get? 
kind of thinking about uh, that one basic to the point. Well, hang on, are these all been designed specifically in response to what yes. happens at pubs? Yes, That's so cool. this is the Pulse logo for the actual nightclub. And then it says, these that says one love, and then it's one Pulse. How many people have been asking you? A ton. I, I can't put a number on it, but every day. Obviously, you're no stranger to tattoos, but don't kick me, don't bite me, don't scratch me. Nearly all the people who died at Pulse were Latino, like Julia. Many from very traditional families. Will you show Nicole and show your folks? Uh, yeah, I mean, Nicole's going to love it. My mom isn't a big fan of tattoos, but I, I think she'll find it pretty. But um, not my dad, no, because uh, he's not really supportive of my lifestyle. Has he always been that way? Yeah, I mean, he just gets really grossed out by gay, gay people. He doesn't, like, hug or kiss me anymore, anything like that. He, or, you know, definitely tries to keep his distance from any affection. That's another reason why what happened was such a tragedy, because, you know, when your own family doesn't accept you, you have, like, this other family that you build, and, and just losing members of that family is so painful because we know what it's like to, to only just have each other. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so day. much. Yeah, no Nearly everyone in here is getting pulse designs, both gay and straight. I'm actually getting this tattoo because I was kind of a regular and I have friends that were there that night and then I had friends who, you know, friends of friends that didn't make it that night. And what does it mean to you, Julia? Why was it important for you to get a tattoo? It's just, you know, those people were like a part of my family. This is a part of me. It means everything. Hey, listen, that's so cool. Thank you. I appreciate you doing this. Why do you think I feel so emotional? <laughs> it kind of feels real now. We've been keeping busy all week. And it's, it's like literally sunken in. <laughs> yeah. While some members of the LGBT community are marking the tragedy with tattoos, others are taking more radical steps, like Erin. The Pink Pistols is a group of pro-gay, pro-gun activists. Erin is setting up a chapter in Orlando to teach gay people how to shoot. The Pink Pistols uh, were founded on the philosophy that uh, armed gays don't get bashed. And it's living proof that you can be LGBTQ and a gun owner. Do you think if they had have had guns in Pulse, the outcome may have been different? I don't know. I wasn't there. Ooh. But if you were trapped in a club with a madman for three hours, wouldn't you want the ability, the option, to protect yourself? Because I would. It's hard to feel entirely comfortable in and around these kinds of environments. Do you believe that more people from your community should be owning guns, should be firing them? I think more people in the LGBTQ community should make an effort to learn about firearms and find out if they are right for that individual person. Don't let fear of the unknown prevent you from learning a potentially life-saving tool. I'm trying to bring the target back. So as you can see, I need more practice. This is something that polarizes it, Americans. It does. And it's so emotive. The idea to some people to just run out and make sure more people have more guns is ludicrous because they're the very things that are causing these mass tragedies. Can you see that? The thing is, you're blaming an inanimate object. We don't blame matches when houses burn down. So why are we blaming a gun when someone shoots someone? We blame the person. It's extraordinary.
extraordinary to hear an LGBT activist using the same language as the gun lobby. But then I heard about an event that would show extreme homophobia is alive and well in America. It's Saturday and I've arranged to meet Julia at the funeral for her friend Drew. But a group of evangelical preachers from the Westboro Baptist Church have also shown up to protest at the funeral. And therefore, it's not okay to be gay. The funeral is just minutes away. Thousands of supporters refuse to be provoked. These guys, you know, they've come here for the publicity. I just cannot understand how these guys are able to be so composed and so reflective and so understanding, given what they've been through. arrive and they've brought their own guardian angels. Drew's family are walking into this church. Their friends, their family members, their supporters are dressed in angel wings so that the family members can't see these individuals protesting. After just half an hour, the Westboro Baptists leave. Westboro Baptist Church have left the building. <laughs> I don't think God would appreciate them giving up like that. <laughs> it's not even a straight community or gay community. It's mean, just one big community of love. Like, who want, he wouldn't want to be a part of this family. <laughs> yes, yeah, quite a cool family. I mean, do, do you feel that? Is, is that kind of exaggerated since what happened at Pulse? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everything's been tenfold. Like, nobody takes each other for granted. We, we're more together than we ever have been. I mean, honestly, who would come out this early in the morning on a Saturday <laughs> to stand in the heat for people they don't even know? I think there's a few blurry eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> including mine. Got their shades on. <laughs> It's a full week now since the killings. I've come to meet Julia at Southern Nights, a club just a couple of miles from Pulse. For many of the people here, this is the first time they've been out since it happened. It's quieter than usual. I know a lot of people are scared, honestly, and it's pretty sad because we're usually always out here every day. Working in the club tonight is Ramon. He was a bartender at Pulse for two years. He's just come back from visiting his friends in hospital. This is a picture of him, right there. His name is Angel. He was shot six times and he survived. And um, not only did he survive, he's in the hospital right now, smiling and laughing and making jokes. I think before this happened, I was more afraid to be gay. And now that this has happened and I've realized that we have support from all over the world, I am not afraid. I really am not. This support and the confidence it's giving them could be the one positive to come out of this tragedy. But before I go, I want to ask Julia, what has to change? Hashtags are brilliant. The support is amazing. The flowers are awesome. But you need significant change. There is something socially wrong with America that this constantly keeps happening. Our culture here is like, if you're a G.I. Joe, you're the man, you're the tough guy, and that's wrong. You know, it should be somebody who's peaceful, somebody who doesn't use aggression to get what they want. And that's what all America's about. I, we use aggression and we get what we want, and that's wrong.
for me, being here, I would describe it as almost bittersweet. I guess on the one hand, these guys were targeted specifically because of who they are. You know, it's the worst homophobic attack we've ever seen in our lifetimes. But on the other hand, the LGBT community, they talk of receiving this overwhelming support, even from outsiders, and you can see that is so comforting to them. Um, so perhaps in a way, they are more accepted now than they ever have been.